Hi, I'm John Cash. Welcome to John Cash Ministries and Revelations Church's Daily Devotion. Today, we're going to talk about not dabbling in sin. It's easy to say, eh, I can cheat on taxes. A little bit, no big deal. I can tell a little white lie. No big deal. Oh, I can do this. I can do that. Won't be a big deal. Just a little sin. Anytime we dabble in sin, sin tends to feed on itself, and that darkness feeds on itself, and it wants to spread like a cancer. Now, the Bible talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6, 7, and 8. Now, this is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. In the Corinthian church, they were famous for their immorality. They were boasting about their immorality, about their sexual immorality. Here's what they were thinking. It doesn't matter what I do. I can sin as much as I want because God forgives me. Now, Paul wholesale rejects that line of thinking, and so does God. We cannot view sin as no big deal. Let's dabble in it. Let's go ahead first because God's going to forgive us anyway. That type of attitude generally does not reside in a true born-again believer's heart. It does reside in a religious person's heart often. So with that in mind, Paul talks to the Corinthians about this, and he says in verse 6, your boasting is not good. They were boasting about their sin. He says, this is not good. You're in trouble here. You're dabbling with sin, and, and it is going to bite you. You can't play with a snake and not expect it to bite you. Don't you know that a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough? The Bible teaches that this yeast he's referring to is symbolic of evil. Now, if you want to have some bread that does not rise, you don't put yeast in it. Okay? You have unleavened bread then. If you want to see bread rise, which most bread does, then you put yeast in it. It doesn't take a lot of yeast to make a big thing of bread blow up. In the same way, it doesn't take a lot of evil to, to occur, and then suddenly you're whole life blows up. In other words, we can't look at evil as just a little bit because it always spreads. And that's what he's saying here, that a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. A little yeast will work throughout your entire life, meaning a little evil. So never view evil as just a little of it. I can play and dabble around. Then he says in verse 7, get rid of the old yeast that you may be a new batch without yeast as you really are. So here he says you need to get rid of the old yeast or the old evil in your life, the old you. The Bible says that when you become a born-again Christian, that you are a new creation. Now with that in mind, you have an old side of you, an old nature. And all of us have that. When you become a born-again Christian, well, there you got the old you right beside you. And that needs to be crucified. It needs to be changed. It needs to be uh, set aside. And you need to have that new creation uh come up alongside you and God begin to work with you and get rid of many of the things in your life that's not pleasing to God. So this is what he's saying in verse 7. Don't dabble with sin. Get rid of that old stuff in your life that's been hounding you for years through the power of God so that you may be a new batch without yeast. In other words, a new creation without all that evil attached to it. And that's what God wants to make the church in America today, a new batch of yeast, a new creation. New people, without all the sin, dragging them along. He says, for Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. In other words, it's all about Christ, and he's been sacrificed, and there is the forgiveness of sins, and through that forgiveness of sins and the repentance of sins, you have that opportunity for a new life. And you will live that new life if you've trusted Jesus and the Passover lamb as your Lord and Savior. We end in verse 8 where it says, Therefore, let us keep the festival. What in the world? Therefore, let us keep the festival. All right, look, folks. There were nearly a dozen Jewish festivals, seven big ones in the Old Testament, a few more sub ones. And what was the purpose of all those festivals? It was to celebrate the goodness and the providence of God. Pretty much that was about it. So he says here, let us keep the festival. Let us keep in the spirit of why they had those festivals in the Old Testament to say to God, thank you for giving me a new life. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for your devotion to me. 
Let us keep that in our hearts, that new festival, that new spirit of thankfulness. Not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness. So the old man, malice and wickedness. Those are two major sins that can lead to all kinds of other sins. He says, so let's put off the old person and put on the new person. And he says that with this. He says, but with the bread without yeast, without the evil, the bread of sincerity and truth. And what does God want more than anything else? He wants us to be sincere and truthful. He wants us to walk in truth and spirit with him. Another way of saying sincerity and truth. So let's not dabble in sin anymore and understand that when we dabble in sin, all it does is multiply in itself and it robs you of the blessings from God. God bless you. Thank you for your support of John Cash Ministries and Revelations Church.